Hello and welcome back to the Cock Dice. In tonight's conversion video, I'm tackling the Size of the Emperor chapter of Space Marines. Now, I'm taking a huge amount of inspiration tonight from this guy here. So I've got my bits. Uh, again, I'm using a, a, an intercessor body from one of the multi-part kits. Scythes for 40k are incredibly hard to come by, and I wanted to give this guy a scythe rather than the power fist. Um, you can get a couple in some of the Death Guard kits, but they are incredibly expensive for a single model conversion. You're talking like six to ten pounds just for the scythe uh, across eBay and, and some of the bits resellers. So I'm going to build our own. Uh, I've grabbed one from um, Age of Sigma. It's one of the Nurgle kits, and then I've grabbed a um, Grey Knight Force Staff Stave thing, and we'll stick the head of the scythe on that. Um, could give it the look of a power weapon. I'm going to leave it really pitted and cool. Uh, the size of the Emperor fight against Nids and, and Steelers quite a lot, and um, therefore it kind of makes sense with a bit of acid blood that the Scythe will have taken a wee bit of damage over the years. Now again, in keeping with the model and the picture, I wanted to use some of the kind of older style um, shoulder pads. Um, it's a Mark III style. They're quite hard to get hold of. I managed to grab uh, one which I think is from the Stern Guard kit uh, with a really nice um, bit of assembly on him for, uh, I presume this guy's going to be some sort of lieutenant or, or captain. I've had to 3D print another one. Uh, these are getting a bit like gold dust these days uh, with the Plastic Horus Heresy kit not being in circulation. Mark III body. Uh, again, it's got the right sort of shape for the chest. We're going to have to widen it a bit because it's significantly slimmer than the, sto the Stormcast. Oh no! I've been watching too many uh, reveals this weekend. Uh, it's considerably uh, slimmer than the Primaris chest. As for his other weapons, uh, he's going to have a plasma pistol. So, staff's going to be... I'm going to have to swap the... essentially mirror the model around. We'll put the staff in his right hand. Uh, so we we'll use this arm here and drop the staff under there and we'll take the pistol from this hand and add it to this hand so he's carrying it in his other hand. It'll make sense. Uh, other bits I've grabbed for this one, I've got some um, Gene Steeler heads from the Fantastic Skull box. Uh, we'll add them. I think I'll add them to his, uh, his backpack actually, uh, sitting on the vents on the back. Uh, and of course a couple of Puri Seals um, because these guys are generally um, veterans of many many campaigns grab this pretty cool loincloth i think it's actually a shoulder um uh, cape type thing from the death card kits uh, it's nice and ragged and torn again i thought that really played well into the kind of look and feel of these battlefield veterans grab this piece from a stormcast eternal retributor i believe uh, it's one of the little things that goes in the back uh, i've stolen the um pennant from it before uh, for something else, but this has a really similar shape to the belt buckle in the artwork, and so I thought it's pretty much perfect. Obviously, it doesn't have scythe symbols on it, it would be a little bit cooler if it did, but it is close enough. So, the first job in this model tonight is going to be getting this body put together and stuck to a base. Now, actually, the first thing we need to do on tonight's model is get the chest piece attached. Now, as you'll see in a moment. This chest is significantly slimmer than a Primaris chest. And shorter as well, bizarrely. Um, so we need to set it up quite high. This is going to be complicated. So I'm going to take the Primaris body right across here. I'm going to take it just above the belt buckle. And then I'm going to cut this one in at the midsection here and take the belt buckle off this but leave this hanging down and we'll fit that over his belt buckle here. I'll probably have to trim that down and then we'll stick the other belt buckle on top of that. So it's going to bulk it out a little bit. We may have to do a bit of sanding and slimming down of various parts. We'll see how that goes. There we have it. You can see how slim this body is in comparison to Primaris Marine. There's a good solid millimetre on either side and it's a lot thinner front to back. So, to get this stuck on, grab a ball of green stuff. 
Like so, roll it into a bit of a tube. We'll stick that onto the back of his torso here. You can do it either way, you can stick it inside his body there or on the torso here. This is probably a little easier. It's best if this green stuff is a bit sticky. What we can do here is just push this inwards until it connects and we can check all the way around that it's in a good place. We need to line the top of it up. I want to see the shoulders up there. You can see the line I want to follow and I need to make sure that hits the belt there. And we'll dab a little bit of glue just behind the belt here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good to me. Let's check the other side. Also pretty good. I want to make sure it's evenly spaced that way as well, if possible. So that's going to like require a bit of time to dry off. We've got a decent connection at the bottom here where his belt buckle was. And obviously we're going to add loincloth and we can add plenty of details. And then we'll fill this back in in a little while once it's had some time just to set and harden a little bit. So we'll get to work on his scythe arm while we're waiting. So the main bit we want off this model is the scythe itself. So get it as flat as you can on the table, knife to the bottom of the scythe and just cut through like so. We've got a nice smooth cut there and just make sure it's very, very level across the top. There we go. Same on the four stave. We want to take it just underneath this symbol here. So nice and neatly across the top there. The more level you can get these cuts the first time, the better. And then finally, this has obviously got a hand on it already, so we'll leave the hand there. I just need to check he's going to sit with it down here. The scythe is going to stand across like that. So we just need a straight cut across his arm. So his hand's going to be down the side of his body like so. We're going to pop the scythe straight in this arm, so we just need to make a straight cut just beneath the wrist guard here straight away through this model. So again, nice sharp knife, bit of pressure, just work your way through it like that. Oh, I've lost that hand. <laughs> we'll get the staff and the arm glued together first of all. We're going to give this fairly attached like so, and let's to carry it forward just a bit. And you're really just looking to line up that arm, make sure there's a bit of a gap all the way around so you've got um, some definition around the wrist area for when we paint and then we'll add the top of the um, scythe to the top here now actually that is an incredibly small connection so if you're doing this at home and you're going to use this model on a tabletop I would strongly strongly recommend pinning that on his other hand we're going to give him a plasma pistol so we need to take the knife out of this hand, so just cut across the top of his hand, taking off the knife blade and um, cross guard, level the top of his hand there, and then we'll also take down the front of his fingers, take the rest of the knife off there, the bottom there. What you will notice is we've got a lovely bar running right across his fingers, so if you just cut little V's each direction in between each of his fingers, like this, we'll just get rid of them nicely and you'll never notice when it's painted. Now on the plasma pistol hand we need to take it just behind that finger and the trigger guard and then we're going to take it straight across the top of this bionic hand here. Obviously if you've got a spare plasma pistol that's not attached to a hand you don't have to do this step. Going back to his scythe arm, I've missed something. I should have done this earlier. Um, because I want to add the funky new shoulder pads on, we need to remove the old shoulder pad. And I'm a bit nervous of doing it now, I've stuck the arm on. So I've done this before. We're just going to trim, first of all, with a pair of clippers around the top, and then we'll just clean up, up the surface afterwards. So I'm just going to have to do this really carefully without breaking the bit I've just stuck together. And there we go, with a little cleaning up, we've got a nice clean shoulder pad area for us to drop. I'm going to the posh shoulder pad over. So you're not going to see most of that uh, clean up, cleaned up area there at all. So we're back to the body now and the one thing we need is a nice decent ball of green stuff. Fresh and squishy 
as you can make it. I'm going to start filling in this body as quickly as we can. So the first part of the call is just to fill these, these gaps in, make it a bit more sturdy, give us something to sculpt with. And what you're doing, trying to do is match up the two halves of the body with your green stuff, fill in the gaps and rounding it out so it all looks like one continuous piece of chest armour as we fill it in. I use the rounded end of a sculpting tool more often than not just to shove it into place and clean it up and only get the sharp end out when I want it to do details or to clear stuff off. This is a very very simple job. I'm just trying to follow the chest arm around and then from here downwards we're going to just pack this fairly heavily. So shove your green stuff inside and pack it in. So for now, that's about as far as I can take this at the moment. This needs some time to cure. If you've got a heat lamp um, or anything like that, putting this near a heat lamp will help speed up the curing process. Uh, a normal lamp bulb will do with anything that gets hot, basically. None of your funky new modern LED bulbs will do. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'll return to this a little later and finish it off. Welcome back. This guy has had a little bit of time to dry off now and the green stuff is not solid. It's just firm enough that this body isn't moving around all the time, which should make it a little easier to sculpt on. So I've mixed some fresh green stuff and we're going to carry on building out this chest. So from here, we're going to add a blob of green stuff really to the front. And then we're going to just bulk it out and then try and bring it in line with the back of it. And I've got probably the hardest bit because it's kind of solid surface sculpting with green stuff which is a bit of a nightmare. Just need to bulk it out and then push it over the edge a bit there. So when we're meeting the edge we're just going to start bringing this in and making the join nice and smooth. Like so you're not going to see much of this so don't worry too much about it. Like a lot of my other space ring conversions with the chest swaps, you can hide a lot of this, but we do need to get this a little smoother. Now this area down here, what we're going to do is something fairly simple. We're going to mimic the kind of Primaris look, so you get fairly small. We don't need probably not even that much. Probably only that much green stuff. Drop the ball on. I'm going to fill this up just back to here, just press it down here above the belt to the centre, get it all squished right up against it. So anywhere where there's corners like this, just get the point end of your tool and just work it all the way into each corner. Really good connection on this. And then we want to curve it that way. So you can see where the armor line follows here. We're just going to follow that round to just under there. Like so. And then for this bit, we're just going to copy this pattern here. So we're going to just go diagonal, slight diagonal, cut downwards. downwards, downwards, downwards like that. Flip it to the other side and just tidy it up on the other end. There you go. Easy as that. See? Simple. Honest, Governor. Um, we can sort out some of this top area where it's not quite as cool as a normal space room chest and not quite as sharp. I'm going to do my usual and probably drop some um, purity seals kind of just just to distract the eye so I'll get the other side done now and I'll be back in a few minutes so there we have it not totally perfect but as pretty much as close as I'm going to get it I think so we need to start getting this model put together um, do next we'll get his loincloth done 
Uh, he's got his weapons with his shoulders on. His backpack and his belt as well. So I suspect I'm going to have to trim this down a little bit yet. But we'll see. We'll see where this leads us to. We'll get this loincloth added to him next. So, uh, where to find my tweezers? There we go. Easy to pick up things like that. As you can see, it's a bit long. Now, we need to cut it. I want to cut it so it sits around his leg there. It seems to fit quite nicely. I need to cut it starting up about here somewhere. So we'll start up around about there. Just pretty much carve through it. Doesn't need to be overly neat, this one. It's a first cut. That. Put that to one side. Get the part again. Let's have another look. Closer. See, we're getting there. So we've got another millimetre or two off this. I'll switch to the smaller knife just for more accuracy. Take that off. Test it again. There we go. That's away from the floor now. Now, as you can see here, it's way, way too wide for this model. And I think what we'll do is along this line here, we're going to trim straight down there and just round it out. And then we'll thin it up and get it back to his back. It's a pity to do that on such a nice piece of cloth. But we're going to have to. Yeah, like so. And then down the front of this, just smooth it out and round it off as if it's curved back on itself. Like that. And you may want to add just a couple of notches in it to simulate some of the wreck and ruin that the rest of it's got. Like so. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the back and just trim this so it's level. What we should be able to do now is just slide this. Oh, not quite, almost there. Almost there with it. Just needs a little bit more of a trim on the back, I think. There we go, we've got, we've got something level to stick it onto now. So we'll do that next, we'll get that glued in, give it a bit of time to dry, and then you can always tidy up the edges a little bit with some green stuff a little later on. See, there we go, that's starting to look pretty good there. As I say, what you'll want to do you just pull a little bit of green stuff around these corners and around there. Just helps tidy it up a little bit. Now we're going to add his belt buckle and I'm going to take the bottom of this armour off here. Just trim it back down a little bit. So it's nice and level. I want to keep that massive belt buckle look of the original model because it was cool. One of the things that drew me to the artwork in the first place. So this is the replacement belt buckle we're going to add, and as you can see, it's pretty thick. So what we're going to need to do is try not to fire it across my room. We're going to have to trim it down, and this is going to be a wee bit of a fun job. Stand at this end. Stand at this end, and I'm just going to have to try trimming the back of it down very, very carefully. It's may have to be off camera, because I can't do it in front of me like that. Well, just start slimming it down, sanding stick of some sort, something like that, drop it on. So as you can see we've pretty much halved that in thickness, it's got very little tidy up to do so that should now fit on there, that is perfect and it really nicely covers up that slightly messy bit there so we'll get that dropped on. So we've got his backpack on, we've got his shoulders on. I'm probably not going to need a pistol holster because, to be honest, he's already pretty busy. We're going to add some Purity Seals to him in a moment, and I did say I was going to add some Nid Skulls to him, but honestly, should we add the Nid Skulls? Yeah, go on. I've had one over each shoulder pad there, so what I'm actually going to do on these is I'm going to just hollow these out a little bit to follow that line of the shoulder a bit more. So just try and take a little bit off here. And fit on that uh, exhaust port. Did I say shoulder pad before? I meant exhaust port for the um, power plant. And then purity symbol. Put his armor up here. This as always just helps hide some of the green stuff work. 
And there we have it, one character for your Sides of the Emperor chapter. If you hang around for a moment or two, you can see a painted version of him coming up right about now. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for joining us here at The Clock Dice. Why not like this video and add a comment below? It really helps boost the channel. And while you're at it, if you click on the icon below, you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live. Why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care, and we'll see you next time.